What about making your sound better? Hi, today we're going to talk about layering sounds. Layering is a very important technique that every producer should know. When layering sounds together, we can have fatter results, almost fuller, without even compressing them. I dragged in uh, two random samples here, two random kick samples, and we're going to work on them. And then we're going to try to see how we can get this into a finer result. So this is my first sample. It's a punchy, nice body kick drum. And this is a uh, random sample number two. You know, it has more of a room to it, a little bit more sustain. It's not as punchy. But I believe that if we combine those two, we're going to achieve a much fuller sound. So, if we just play them together, let me unsolo this. We have this sound that has an excess of attack and is not, it doesn't feel really glued together. To do that, we're going to use um, a notes preset from Ableton Stock. You can do this with any spectrum you you have. The um, trick here is to identify the fundamental frequency of those kick drums. So I'm going to solo my first kick drum. Then we'll click on that. And let me close this too. I'm going to go head over to my notes preset from Spectrum Ableton Stock. And drag it on my first kick drum. I'm going to double click just to have a better. So now we can identify the pitch of the first kick drum, which is A0 at around 55 hertz. Now I'm going to head over to my second kick drum and do exactly the same. So this is G0 at around 49 hertz. Now what I want to do is tune those kick drum together. I prefer the tone of the first one, which is at A0. So I'm going to have to transpose the second one two semitones upwards. To do so, I'm going to double click on my sample and use the transpose knob on the bottom left. I'm going to hit the up arrow two times, which means that I drag it up for two semitones. Now my kick drum is tuned to the fundamental frequency of the kick drum above. Let's play them back together now. They feel more tight, although I still feel a little bit lacks clarity and it's a little bit more boomy. That happens because we layered two very low frequencies. So I'm going to take care of that by adding an equalizer on the second one. I'm going to add I'm going to add a low cut on the second one to prevent overlapping of the same fundamental frequencies. I'm going to choose low cut and drag it up to around 80 hertz. Sounds much clearer. Without the EQ and with the low cut There is a lot more definition in the low end, and definitely it's going to make things easier for club systems. No, we're not done yet. I want to layer another sound on top of those two to create a little bit more impact. So I'm going to go over to my samples and type kick one more time. And look for a kick drum that has a little bit more of an attack. So I'm going to drag this sample Let me solo it Now for this sample, we're not going to care about tuning it 
we're just going to low cut it because it's essentially used only as a um, attack sound, like the little initial that you hear that lets the kick punch through the mix. We're going to keep only the high frequency content from that one. So again, I'm going to use an equalizer and double click. And I'm going to choose low cut. This time I'm going to cut much higher to around four or five thousand hertz. Around 3000 is good for this one. And now I'm going to try to use the level knob or the fader to adjust the volume until it matches the loudness of the first kick drums. So to do that, I'm going to use a utility plugin and drive the gain up. So essentially, the sound we're layering is this on top of our previous layered kick drum. Before and after. So the initial kick sound that we started working with is this. And after two layers, we came up to that. Now, what I'm going to do is group those three channels together and control it through one bass truck. What I want to do is grab my favorite compressor and I'm going to go with a five filter one. And for the sake of this example, I'm going to use the full screen so we can see what we're doing better. So I'm going to just start by setting the threshold to zero and the ratio to one. And I'm going to start working and I'm going to start working my way until I glue those samples together. The first thing that I want to do is find the sweet spot of my attack time. The attack time is very important on the kick drum because it lets the transients through. I'm going to start lowering the threshold with a ratio of 2 to 1. Now I'm going to adjust my attack time until it feels better. You see, when I start increasing the attack time, the kick lets more transients through, meaning it's more punchy. So now I'm going to increase the ratio. And that is the before and the after. Now I'm also going to compensate for the gain. to around 5 decibels. We get a lot more sustain on the kick drum and it feels more glued together. Now I'm going to duplicate the first channel outside of the group and I'm going to bypass the differences. So this is the sample that we started working with and this is the sample that we layered. A lot more punchy, a lot more clear.